Welcome to what I would want in the My First Gran Turismo game. As y'all probably know by now, while there ain't much details released about it, it is confirmed that there would be the My First Gran Turismo demo sort of thing to come out later this year. And really all we've seen is the screenshot of it with the Lamborghini Countach. And it's said to have elements of the original Gran Turismo, but meant to cater to new Gran Turismo 7 players. So, I mean, you can kind of combine that. Of it's using the Gran Turismo 7 base game to make what events can that are reminiscent of the first Gran Turismo. I've played GT1, like... An hour, maybe. So, that ain't the dandiest. But I'll still get into it anyway, because the way that I see it is that Gran Turismo has been around long enough that so many people have so many different first Gran Turismo experiences. Of course, it makes sense to pay tribute to the first Gran Turismo, but, I mean, all things considered, GT1 sold around about 10 million copies or something like that. And the series has sold well over 70 million copies, so a lot of people's had f different first experiences than the GT1. So, yeah, I'll get into it, folks. I mean, I can give a little bit of context. You can go back and watch the whole heck of heat, but for a little bit, uh, I started playing in Gran Turismo 3. I mean, the first thing that I really remember doing in GT3 is going to arcade mode and racing on the oval, the super speedway. That was the twin ring rope taggy clone copy thing where they didn't have the actual track in the game. I don't know if that was the first thing that I did, but as far as I can remember, it's the first thing that I remember. So, I mean, take that as you may, but I feel like that's kind of one of the more straightforward things. It's a whole heck of a heap of people's first Grand Turismo experience was just screwing around in an arcade mode. It wasn't really much of an actual competitive experience experience and all things considered if the my first Gran Turismo is just a bit of an arcade mode I mean there hasn't really been any need to play much of the arcade mode of Gran Turismo in a long time I mean really the last decent arcade mode was GT4 I'd say and in GT5 you could use the custom tracks, so yay, but there's no way this one's going to have the custom tracks. In GT6, it was kind of an afterthought. In GT Sport, it didn't even really release with anything like that. And in GT7, really, the only point of the arcade mode is for when there's no online, and you can do very basic things with that. And honestly, that's kind of what I expect the my first Grand Tours mode to be, is just a very basic thing of, oh, they could do a R32 or 3 Skyline or a first or second gen Miata or something like that at Trail Mountain or High Speed Ring or whatever, and then boom, that's kind of my first Gran Turismo sort of thing. Is this kind of doing a general vague thing to GT1, but it's not going to end up going away. Honestly, all things considered of what I would want would be a bit of a callback to the best of all the Grand Tours. GT1, yeah, I guess you can just have the basic of the 1990s Japanese cars at like High Speed Ring or something like that. But there's so many other Grand Tours modes too that they could really go into and have a lot more to do with it. In GT2, and really what they should do is just go through all of them. For, like, your Gran Turismo 2 experience, I haven't played that game all that much either, probably. Not even 10 hours playing GT2 over time, and I haven't actually in a long while, but I have a bit more experience with GT2 than one. GT2 experience can be more of the actual fleshed out Gran Turismo sort of thing. While I don't realistically think that my first Gran Turismo is going to have any new 
or updated tracks of the old tracks or whatever. Nothing of a track that we don't have in GT7. I'll put it like that. They could do more with the X of car list. I mean, GT2 had 600 something cars. So they could implement that and use more of a variation there. I think GT2 had quite a bit more American cars and such like that. GT2 could maybe be Viper versus like well, I mean like I said I barely played it. Maybe it could be Viper versus the few like the classic muscle cars that were in GT2 from what I remember like Selby Cover was and I think maybe one of the older Corvettes was too and then maybe they could use the Corvette that is in GT7 and kind of like spec it with parts and stuff with what the AI is driving to be like what the Corvette was in GT2 from what I remember the C4 Corvette in GT2 is different of what we have in 7 but they could spec it to sort of be that way and stuff like that and then they could still do kind of a different 90s Japanese style event than they could do it at Trial Mountain or something like that. And that could be the GG2. With GT3, because it was more of like a graphical leap, they could do more of like the graphical side of things. And so how pretty the game was. For the time, maybe, just maybe, that could be where they implement escape sort of things. You know how Seattle is different than it was of that track when it existed? I mean, literally of Seattle it is, so it's, it doesn't really make sense to do modern adaption on that track well because, I mean, PD, Kaz, somewhere along the lines of that. Said straightforward is just making city tracks nowadays is a lot harder because to live up to the details of other types of tracks it would just take so much rendering power and so much worker hours and all that to compete and make it look on par with the rest of the tracks that aren't city tracks that ain't really worth it. Where they could do scapes of that. They can essentially do scapes that go down the line of what would kind of end up being Seattle track and they could do quite a few different of GT2 style tracks as well. Like I said, I don't really expect there to be any tracks in the Meyer Fires Grand Turismo that ain't in GT7, but maybe they could do it with escapes as well. They could do it for like Red Rock Valley. They could do sort of kind of special stage route 11. Special stage route 11 kind of straightforward. It's meant to be kind of the Tokyo area of highways and stuff. So, I mean, really the Tokyo Expressway is a spiritual successor to that I had anyway. But they could do escapes and stuff kind of in order to maybe look like a special stage route 11 or 5. Something like that for GT3. For GT4, it should probably start being more the main focus, I would say. I mean, it's kind of all the general consensus combined that GT4 is the best Gran Turismo. And they could do quite a bit with that too. Mainly I would like them to add a lot more of the original music from that game and others too, really some of all of it. But mainly GT4. And also with GT4 what they could do is implement the better iteration of the used cars. I think it's kind of the general consensus that the used cars are the best implemented in GT4 so they could do it like that. Instead of used cars of how they are in 7 where it's just kind of all random and stuff. They could have all of the used cars available of what they do have for the game in sex and off. Like a classic up to 1970s. They could have like 80s and 90s dealership and then 2000s and 2010s as well and then that can be kind of the callback to GT4 but then ramped for modern times like I've had GT4 only had to use cars up to the 90s somehow I remember obviously it's a lot or it's around about 20 years later so it makes sense to have 2000s and 2010s as well for used cars to like that and that can be a homage to GT4 and then they can also do sort of like the special event type of things again I don't realistically think that we would get any more tracks 
but maybe they can figure out of how to do pistol missions and stuff. I mean, maybe straightforward. They could do about the best they could, like mimic the missing 34 or something like that from GT4. We have the SLR McLaren. We have quite a few of the Mercedes, not all of them, but they could probably combine enough of it detune, uptune a little bit, whatever it may be, to do something like that as well. I don't know, I think GT4 is kind of remembered as the most well-rounded Gran Turismo, so there's really no true homage that they could do with GT4 to kind of implement everything about the game, but that just shows how the good that GT4 was. That would probably be more what I do. With GT5, I mean, probably all in all, the most useful way to play GT5 anymore is to use the created tracks feature, but I don't realistically think they would be able to figure out a way to implement that for the My First Gran Turismo. I mean, in a lot of ways, GT5 was kind of just, uh, the premium cars got the graphical update of GT4, and there were some new events and missions and that sort of thing, but GT5, well, in my opinion, it is a great game. It doesn't actually have the most individual identity. The Gran Turismo game it was kind of a hodgepodge of classic and more modern for the time, and that's why some people don't particularly like it all that much, as it doesn't really have as much of a true identity. But all in all, I think the best implementation for GT5 would probably be a B-spec sort of thing. You could argue that GT4 did B-spec better, especially because you could put on three times and race... For you, but at the very least, GT5 had a B-spec actual story to it, and that could be the implementation of the My First Gran Turismo, is that they can do B-spec mode, because I think for a lot of people, that's actually how they got some of the start with Gran Turismo as well, was using the B-spec. Whether it was in GT4, it was doing the racing for them, or in GT5, they could get money and have it going in the background and progress through that mode for the levels, whatever it may be. I think a whole heck of a heap of people got to Grand Turismo because of that, too, because they might have been too young to be all that good at the game yet, and they could have the B-Spec do stuff for them. So that could be an implementation. Maybe they could kind of have it a combination of GT4 and 5, but like a, a B-Spec style story mode. Maybe even for the PS5, and especially if they do some updates and stuff once the PS5 Pro comes out, to have the Sophie AI be the B-Spec. Like, start out with kind of the regular AI, and then once you, like a GT5-style campaign, spec the AI up to the peak of its career, like they had in GT5, then it becomes the Sophie AI speed, and is pretty much as fast as any actual reward player in the game sort of thing. That's what you get of like the peak of your Earth to Beast spec. Again, that may be not be the day news for GT5, especially for how much I consider GT5 on Gran Turismo's pedestal. In my opinion, it's the second best Gran Turismo of all time, but I mean, all in all, I'd say that would be what I'd think is best. But for any and all games, leave it in the comments for what you think be best about it. For GT6, I think it would be cool if they actually implemented more of a community feature. GT5 also had a community, but I mean, GT6 actually had communities that you could make, so maybe they could implement something along the lines of that. I think a lot of people's first Grand Turismo experiences who are younger is the community and more online racing feature of GT6 because... There was a whole heck of a heap of cars in that game, and people didn't... Or people who played it for the first time didn't really take into effect as much of the standard cars and all that of people who played Gran Turismo longer, or my age, or older, whatever it may be, and realized the standard to premium quality difference. Those who just started in GT6 really didn't notice it that much. So I'd say a lot of people's first experiences of around about that era was probably getting into the community and find somewhere to race for themselves of whatever skill level they were at the time and that sort of thing as well. And, this is just a guess, but maybe because my first Gran Turismo was free, and that means that you wouldn't need PlayStation Plus to race online. 
So maybe what they could do of say the five or so tracks, the 30 or so cars, whatever, it ends up being that the game adds. I mean, more of the mayor, you're straightforward there with that. Then, because obviously it would just be kind of dipping a toe in the water, you wouldn't get the full experience, so it would still be an advertisement to get GT7, have that online be free, and they could do a community feature to where you can race an open lobby, but be able to plan it of like the communities and make different things and all that, and then you could share your scapes and those communities of kind of the classic Grand Tourism style tracks that they might have not been able to add. To the new game, because the layout of the areas have changed, or whatever it may be, like I was talking about with GT2 and 3, that sort of thing. So it's a mix of a better way to share the scapes, because they could share community to community, and they wouldn't have to worry about the ratings and stuff of how it is with GT7, and then it could also be free, so dipping a toe in the water, actual online, and someone like me do that a whole heck of a heap, because I don't have... PlayStation Plus, so it actually played to my first Grand Turismo. A whole heck of a heap, if that's the way that we are realistic, we'll expect that to happen, whether it's the playing online or the community type thing. Honestly, not particularly, but it would very much be nice if they had it. They could implement GT Sport is like with again, if they have one, they'd probably have both. If they have a GT6 style online with lobbies, they could do kind of a bare bones sport mode type thing and they could have it be like the equivalent of a race A. And that would be what their sport mode is. But I don't really think there'd be all that much point to have a full on sport mode to have it to where it changes three different times each week. But maybe they could have a race A that changes at least once a month so then that way you don't actually have to worry about any Driver and sportsman separating implement it whatsoever. We're gonna do it like a race A, where it doesn't change the driver rating anyway, and sometimes it's that way for sportsman separating. But they could do it to where instead of having an outright sportsman separating, it's you are uh, in the race by qualifying time, but then they could implement it with what GT Sport. It, one, is this kind of a sport mode style thing in general. And then two, they could still sew an up and down arrow during the race. When it's up and green, it means that you're being clean down and orange, then it's dirty, like of what they had. With GT Sport, it would be a little bit different because it wouldn't be an SR, because like I said, it wouldn't really make sense to implement DR and SR for my first Grand Turismo sort of thing, especially because, like I said, I don't realistically expect it. Actually, I have online, it would just be cool if it did. But at the very least, they could show new players who are new to GT Sport. They might not have exactly understood how the sports and separating worked, because frankly, it was quite broken. If they could make it more bare bones to where it's just based on qualifying time, being all that dirty isn't as big of a deal because it's not actually hurting. Driver rating, it's not as serious of a game, there's not really a true competitive aspect of it but they could actually still learn it more just in general with the up arrow being good down arrow being bad sort of thing and the new players can learn from that i mean a lot of times in gt sports you could back when they actually showed it which they got rid of that in seven and even towards the end of sport got rid of it too you could have 99% up arrows and then like one down arrow and you still would lose sportsman separating so it was very much confusing and a lot of times you get a down arrow just for bump drafting and stuff like that. That way if there's only one race that doesn't change as often they could actually try to optimize the up and down arrows that much more so if they could figure out with the My First Grand Turismo maybe just maybe then they could add it to GT7 or future Grand Turismo full game or whatever it may be. But yeah now to GT7 is they add a few of the modern things of GT7. Maybe they could have a little bit of VR, PSVR 2, do it again. For the PS5, maybe you could have some selfie AI in there. Again, your B spec driver, if they go with what I said, you'd end up getting it. And then also, you could have a race with it. 
And then again, it would still be dipping a ton of water because it wouldn't be as many tractor cars. It'd still be good effort. Now he's meant for GT7. Have kind of just a modern tech of GT7 that just wasn't possible in the old games. And I mean, just straightforward to GT7 is the graphics as well. It'd have the graphics and physics of GT7. So that, of course, is going to be implemented no matter what. Of course, we're getting that. I realistically don't think the graphics or physics are going to be any different than what's in GT7, so that's the most straightforward of all of it that we would get. Realistically, I don't expect it to be even close. I would say it's going to be more like a house head of GT1. It's going to be a few tracks that kind of reminisce of like racing some cars up to the 1990s. And it's going to be at like Trial Mountain, Deep Forest, High Speed Ring. That really be about it. Ran it again, they could kind of, I mean, look at the cover cards, Kuntos. If there were some cars in there that weren't simply in GT1, but would have made sense that if PD had the money to or whatever back then, they would have had in GT1, like a Countach or something like that. Just back then, PD couldn't really afford a Lamborghini license and that sort of thing. So, I mean, that kind of implementation makes sense. Is make it GT1 more of how they envisioned it to be, just without the limitations, whether it's monetary or technology or whatever it may be. At the time, that sort of thing. And I mean, I think it's pretty straightforward that they're going to do that. Just, I would like it to be some implementation and of any and all the Grand Tours. I mean, maybe they could even do a little bit of Easter eggs to the other stuff. Like GT2000, say you have a trophy for if you take a picture again, if the implement escapes things, like I was talking about too. Of the places that they couldn't make a track of. Like if you, if they... It would make sense for them to actually have the car in it because, again, 1990s style reminisce across the Grand Tours, but have that uh, Lancer 5 or 6? 5? The late 90s one. That's the yellow Lancer that's already in GT7 anyway, so it'll be easy enough implementation. Um, take a picture of a yellow car, whether they have a liver editor or whatever it may be, as long as. Its base color is yellow. At the escape for Shadow Circuit, you get like a trophy for that reference to GT2000 and the meme. They could have a reference to GTHD or um, GT5 Prologue, as they could have Iger Nordwand in game. And like if you. Take a picture like going on that jump or something like that where a car is in the air. Something like that. Um, GT PSP reference could maybe be if they happen to have a Ferrari or Bugatti Veyron in it. It could be taking that car to an old area like of how in GT PSP you could race a Bugatti Veyron at Seattle, that's the only game that you can do that. That sort of thing. And whether it's an old track or old scape or whatever it may be, like new car to old track or something like that could be referenced to PSP because there are a few examples where you could do that. There. Maybe a little miscellaneous Easter eggs like that that could even implement all the Grand Tours up. And then maybe even like a little bit of nod to Tourist Trophy or Motor Tune GP, GP if they really wanted to because it, this is overall meant for the PlayStation 30th anniversary. They could just have a little like poster or something at Trial Mountain and like way off the beaten path or something of like it's a motorcycle that if you take a picture of it you get a good trophy or something like that tourist trophy and then it's a double meaning there because you get the PlayStation trophy or tourist trophy take a picture like a poster off the beaten path or Motor Tune GP, GP maybe they could do it something Like where if it, if the physics allow it or something, like if they have enough of a jelly car in the game to do it, like have your car up on two wheels, kind of like what Motor Tune GP did, and you're able to save it or something like Motor Tune GP moment, like of how that game your car kind of tilt on two wheels in an arcadey way because that was the point, it was kind of like stylized like that, like if you get your car up on two wheels and you can get it back down on the ground, like get it trophy or something like that, a modern tune GP moment. 
have a bunch of different Easter eggs because overall it's meant to be the PlayStation 30th anniversary event. They, they could do any and all those sort of things, but I mean, at the very least, I get why they're doing something like this. Because Grand Turismo, all in all, is probably the most well-known Grand Tur... Or, I got that background. PlayStation exclusive, because Grand Turismo is what basically made PlayStation... Success with them. Overall, I'm almost certain there's other PlayStation exclusives that have more sales than the entire franchise. And Grand Turismo, but early on, it was Grand Turismo that was the most successful uh, PlayStation exclusive. So, I mean, if there was no Grand Turismo, there might not even be PlayStation anymore. So, of course, some stuff may be done better later. Overall, Grand Turismo is what solidified PlayStation as successful. So, of course, it makes sense that they would do something like that. It just depends on the implementation of how well it ends up being. At the very least, having something like this is better than nothing, and it's a cool Maz and all that, and I'll play it some. But ultimately, I mean, it might be almost nothing. It might be something that has an hour of most of gameplay, and it's exactly what you expect, and it's... Nothing more, but, I mean, at the very least, it's better to have it than not at all. I really don't think there's any way they could screw this up to the point of it actually makes the Grand Turismo franchise look worse as a whole. But the more they can do with it, Cars Tracks are straightforward. Or, like, implementation of each Grand Turismo, like I said, and maybe some Easter eggs for some other things as well, the better it can be. But, I mean, overall, it's worth more V haul that they're doing it than not. So, I mean, there's really no downright obvious negatives to this at all. I don't really think they could screw up a free pretty much GT7 demo, but a mods of classic Grand Turismo all that terribly much. So overall, it's worth at least a yee but maybe, just maybe, it could even end up being worth a sure yee -haw.